Hey everyone and welcome to another video and today we're going to be exploring the concept of deaths in League. Now, I think deaths are a very, very misunderstood concept. The only other piece of YouTube content that I think does it justice is actually the Bowser's video about his solo queue guide, where he kind of explores the idea of, okay, the more you die, the less gold you're worth, therefore you can exert a lot of pressure on the side lane without giving a lot of advantages to the enemy, etc., etc. Um, now, look, this video is not going to be about split pushing with Holebreaker Scion or with Holebreaker Tryndamere, but I'm going to be talking big picture about how to get maximum value from your deaths and, I guess, explain or teach you guys a more nuanced way of viewing dying in league, because a lot of my videos on my channel are about the importance of staying alive, value life, don't die. And yes, I, I'm not backtracking on that, but I think it's important to think about dying in League in a more nuanced fashion. So the way I'm going to go about this is actually um, distilling it into two core concepts. The first being high value deaths and the second being low value deaths, right? So when assessing a death or even a potential death, there is a bunch of aspects or variables or ways of reviewing it that... Um, can add a little bit more clarity to this whole discussion. Now, before we even get into this, I've got two little characters on the side here. We've got the Balus and Nemesis. You know, the Balus is here for obvious reasons with his Scion strategy, but Nemesis is an interesting one. So I've actually watched a lot of Nemesis trying to get to the bottom of what makes him such an exceptional sol uh, exceptional solo queue player, you know? And I think that, um, you know, Nemesis has a lot of strengths as a player, but one of the things I've noticed upon studying him is that he definitely understands what it means to have a high value versus low value death. And we're actually gonna get into a bunch of clips in this uh, in this video um, from his stream. So sit tight on that one. So moving on, pressure exerted on the map and what my team can get from the death, right? An obvious example of this is if, you know, I'm, uh, let's say I'm shoving up mid by myself and let's say I, I try to go for a solo kill and then I die, um, and I'm thinking, guys, I've, I, you know, I, I'm doing all this work. Where the hell's my team? What are you guys doing? But then I, little do I realize my entire team is in my, in base near the Nexus. Therefore they can't get anything with the pressure I'm exerting on the map and they can't get anything from this death, right? You see this commonly for all the people that got super excited about trying to replicate the balance of Scion strategy. They'd be split pushing all the way a bot side tier two. And then, you know, three people would come to collapse onto them and they'd buy, he'd buy a lot of time or whatever. And then he dies, and then he realizes, holy shit, my team's in base. And he'd be typing in chat, guys, useless team, can you guys please do something? Why are you guys doing Baron or something? And then the, the guys, the other people on the team are like, dude, we can't do anything. Look at where we are. We're in our base right now, right? So in order to actually juice the value or actually understand this concept here, like what my team can get from the death, you fundamentally need to understand the location of where your team is in the map. Your team can't get something if they're not in location to actually capitalize on that. So the idea of exerting a bunch of pressure on the map and you know buying a lot of time, creating a lot of space, whatever, such that your team can get things is very real and it's very important. And this is an important variable to consider. But in order to actually juice the value of this, what really determines this as a high value versus low value death is most importantly, you know, the location of your team and are they in a situation where they can get something from the death, whether it's a Baron or taking their top side camps or a top tier through whatever the hell it might be. The next one here is how hard was I to kill? Now, the reason this is important is because this leads to how long did it take for me to actually die? Again, if I'm split pushing on bot tier two, but I'm really squishy and I just get one shot, then I'm not really gonna buy much time for my team to do anything on the other side of the map. Whereas if I'm a hole breaker scion with three items and they need to bring three people towards me and they, you know, I'm, I'm gonna take 45 seconds to kill. My team can do whatever they want. They can do a Baron and probably get a, a tower and take the entire top side camps. So I think it's really important to consider when you're dying, how long did it take for you to die? The longer it takes for you to die, a lot of the time, the higher value the death is. They're gonna to have to burn more cooldowns. You're gonna be able to create more space on the map, et cetera, et cetera. Now I do think there's a mental warfare component to this as well, like just really just annoying the enemy and just really being a nuisance. I'm not gonna cover that right now. We'll cover that maybe later on in the video, but I just wanna kind of plant that seed in there. Moving on, also the bounty value and value of the death, you know, as the Balus has kind of spoken about in his video, you know, if you're already zero four, well dying one more time isn't really gonna be worth it. But if I'm three and oh, the value of my death is a lot obviously lower, right? Because I'm gonna be, I'm probably gonna have a bounty, well lower for me, higher for them, right? So you always need to be considering how much am I worth? Do I have a bounty? What's the value of my death from like a gold perspective? Then you've also got, do I lose farm, XP, camps, objectives while dead? If I do die here, 
What do I lose as a result of dying? Now, if I've got out my wave, I've already cleared my cancel, we've just got the neutral objective, sometimes dying isn't that valuable because even if they kill me, it's like, well, I needed to recall anyway. I've already got my wave out. You guys can't get a neutral objective. Hmm, that's actually not a bad death for me. That could actually be a pretty high value death in some cases. So that's another thing we need to consider. And the last one here is how many resources did they burn for me? Did they ban all, burn ultimates? Uh, did they ban, bur, uh, did they drop a lot of HP because they had to go for a dive? Did they burn summoners, flashes, TPs, ignites, exhausts? How many resources did they fundamentally use on me to kill me? Now, the way I want you to view it, guys, is that there's no such thing as this one is a high value kill, uh, death, sorry, this one is a low value death. It's always on a scale, guys. You're somewhere here on a scale. You know, sure, we're going to have extremely high value deaths and we're going to have extremely low value deaths, but I think it's important to think in terms of nuance and gray area. Where on this spectrum am I? Roughly how valuable was this death? Or how low value was this death? And I think that's a, a much healthier way to view the game in general because, um, you know, welcome to League. It's a game of gray area and nuance. So let's actually get into some examples and um, let's get into the specifics. So we're going to start by looking at some high-ish value deaths and then we're going to go over some low-ish value deaths. Now, the reason I use the term high-ish, uh, the word high-ish, is that some of them are going to be extremely high value. Some of them are going to be, you know, borderline even, just average. And then some of them are going to be slightly above average, right? So we're going to see a spectrum of deaths. Some of these are going to be my gameplay, some of them other people's gameplay, high elo, low elo, whatever. Um, so we'll get into the details here. And the other thing I want to caveat this with is that this is going to be more of an exploration of many topics. So there's going to be a lot of pausing, going on a lot of tangents. Keep that in mind as we go through this one. So here in this situation, I was dominating the Syndra. Syndra was really low on the tower, shitting on the Syndra here. And then what happens is that Ashara comes through, I end up avoiding that. I've basically got the entire wave out, which is pretty good. I force the Jarvan to show on the map. Their top laner comes through as well. He has to burn flash. So notice how many variables, how many people, how much information I gathered for my team. I know their Jarvan's location. I, I burnt the Ash R. Um, I forced people to come mid. I've also forced their top laner to come all the way from top to mid and burn the Jace's flash, all just to kill me. Right, so I wouldn't say this is a de definitive super high value death because I am worth a decent amount of gold. I'm only 1-1. One, one. I'm not like 0-3 or anything. And on top of that, my bot lane actually isn't even in lane. So even though the Ash used R, my bot lane aren't even really in a position to capitalize on the fact that Ash is using R because Ash, I think, had tempo over my bot side right now. Um, so I would say that this is a, you know, I would say not a low value death, but not a super high value death. Again, this is a high-ish value death. Um, and uh, given how, you know, that flash on Jace is really, really important, and I think that's a very significant cooldown, especially since he's three and one, we've got a lot of dive. I think it's fair to say that this was uh, a pretty high value death here. So overall, again, with all things considered, not a bad death. All right, so moving on. This one here is of Nemesis. So Nemesis here, we kind of freeze frame, is pressuring the Akali. Now, Akali was forced to R to exert a little bit of pressure here. Now, if you freeze frame, bot lane not really quite in lane yet. Jungle really far away. We see the enemy Nocturne kind of here. It looks like Braum had tempo um, before our bot lane. So here we go. Alts nearly kills the Akali. Rumble comes from topside, very reminiscent of the last clip with me. So the top laner comes down to burn R as well. He avoids that one. Tries to kill the Akali, doesn't quite do it. Avoids the Braum Q. Kites down. Buys quite a bit of time here. Runs into the Nocturne. Does burn his flash though, unfortunately, and ends up dying. Now, again, this one's a little bit interesting, right? So I'll, if we kind of bring it back to the variables, I would say number one, he burnt a lot of cooldowns, right? He burned Akali R, he burned Rumble R, um, so there's that. I would say number two, he did buy a lot of time, right? Rumble had to move all the way down and, and had to chase him essentially here. Like he wasn't an easy kill. He was relatively hard to kill here. He, he made a lot of people show on the map, wasting a lot of Braum's time. Braum couldn't just instantly go mid, then instantly go back. Like there was a lot of time that Braum had to invest here. So in that sense, it's relatively high value. The downside is that the bot lane weren't really in a super advantageous position in terms of like tempo. Like they were only coming back down the map, which is again, very similar to my previous death there before to the Jace. So if his bot lane were in lane, ready to go and capitalize on this, then, you know, one might say it was a definitive high value death. Um, and again, he had a similar scoreline to me. He's one and one, so he still is definitely worth a, a bit of gold. 
The other thing that makes it a little bit more complicated is that he also blew his flash for this, which if he just died to the Nocturne and held his flash, I think that probably would have made a little bit more sense because that's what it, kind of what makes it eh, less of a high value death. The positive though, guys, is because we wasted so much time the, the, and the Braum actually roamed and we waste a lot of Braum time is that they were able to kill the Jinx on bot side because the Braum wasn't there to peel for the Jinx. So that's actually one of the benefits of again exerting that pressure. You're drawing many people towards you to actually make the game easier for your teammates. And this is what Nemesis is an expert at doing. He knows how to draw a lot of pressure in and a lot of the time not even die to the game, just waste a lot of time, burn a lot of cooldowns, etc. or even outplay, and that creates space for everyone else on the map. Faker is obviously, people know of, an expert of that, doing that exact same thing as well. So notice here, guys, again, I don't want this to be a black and white video. This is a bad death or a good death. Again, I want you guys to think bigger picture about your deaths. That's the main message of this video. It's, it's not that simple. It's not about, yes, this was good or this was bad. It's, it's always on a scale. So this one, to kind of set the scene, he's three and two, but his team is absolutely getting stomped. So when you're really far behind and your team is really far behind, the enemy has bounties is typically quite good to, to trade kills because yeah, you know you're just behind and you typically want to um you know want to get their bounties. So here he goes in, misses his E, Nocturne's able to back him up, and he's able to kill the Akali, and it looks like his Nocturne's actually able to um you know finish him off there. So it ends up being a two for one. So this is actually, a, I would say, a relatively high value death because especially when your team is really far behind and you want to make something happen, trading one for two in a situation like this is is, is definitely favorable. I think he could have played this mechanically better, obviously. But um, I don't mind this. This one's actually not too bad because, again, like... You're, he's in a bit, of a bit of a desperate game state. I think uh, this Akali had a little bit of a bounty. Yeah, not really the end of the world. So this one's a little bit complicated to review because I think there's a lot of variables we're not really seeing right now. But he didn't have to burn flash because he didn't have flash. He burnt a Kali R. He burnt, um, I think this was Vi R as well. So he burnt two ults for this one, but we also burnt two ults. So if the game was even, I would say this is a pretty, you know, low, low value death. Given we are behind, I would kind of put it over the edge to more of a high value death. So I think this one here is my gameplay. I'm not 100% sure. So let's just set the scene here. So we're four. Yeah, this is my gameplay. I'm 4-0 as Syndra. There's no neutral objectives up. I'm trying to greed here for a little bit to get this tower right here. Um, got a decent amount of gold. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to greed for this tower here quickly. Um, and then what ends up happening is a Garen TP's behind me, burns flash, and then, um, and then kills me here. Now... You know, you might think, okay, you're four and one. You probably had a bounty, a big bounty. That's a pretty low value death, you know? And I think that's a completely fine assessment. The other thing to consider though, is that I did already get the wave. I didn't burn flash or anything. I already didn't have flash. I already had to recall anyway. And on top of that, there's there's no neutral objective up right now. So I look, given that it was such a big bounty, I would say this is more of a low value death. I would put this more in the low value death category, but it's not super low value. Because again, I I got the tower, I got my wave, I can now get my item. I didn't lose any neutral objectives. I didn't burn my flash. They and Garen also burnt flash. So there's like a lot of. It's not again. It's not as simple as you just gave a bounty. It's bad. So, but yes, I think this is still slightly definitely. I mean, not slightly. I'd say it's definitively leaning towards low value death, but um, not super 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 low value. Okay, moving on to another one here. So this one's a Yone gameplay. Goes for an all-in here. I think this is one of my MLA clients. Goes for an all-in onto the, the Orianna. Kills the Orianna. Does burn Flash for doing so, but so does the Orianna. So we trade Flash for Flash, which is great. We definitely like trading Flash for Flash as an Orianna into your Nancy Orianna. Um, he ends up sticking around for the next wave to deny the wave into the Orianna. So he ends up successfully getting the wave. But here comes Quinn. We go for the all into the Quinn. Beautiful hold on the Q3. Excellent. Executes that as well. Kills the Quinn as well. And then Yi comes through and he dies to the Yi. So I would say this is definitively a high value death, right? We killed two people. We burnt multiple summoners from... We burnt summoners from Oriana. We actually got the wave out. Um, and, and we forced their jungler to come mid and waste a lot of time mid and show on the map mid. So to be honest, I think this is a very high value death. And these are the sorts of deaths... In my opinion, if you're going two for one, burning all this stuff, stuff making people show on the map, being hard to kill, this is definitively a high value death. I absolutely love it. This one is a, definitely a late game play here. We've got basically a full item Katarina here. Shove out the side wave at the moment. 
pretty close 37 to 31 kills. Bit of a chaotic game from the looks of things. The enemy come through. Looks like Blitzcrank flashes. Here looks like we kill the Twisted Fate. Again, a, sh a big shutdown. 500 core shutdown there as well. I think we kill the Blitzcrank as well. And we, we burn a lot of time. Right? Waste a lot of time. So that would be, in my opinion, a definitively high value death. We get a bounty. We get two kills. We're not dead for any neutral objectives, which is great. We um, bought a lot of time and made multiple people show down the map. We made four people come to bot side, which should allow us to maybe shove out waves on the other side of the map or whatever. Or maybe our Talia to clean up here. This is, again, a pretty clear, definitive, high-value death. All right, so now we're getting into the lowish value death. So this first one, I TP in. Now, to set the scene, my jungler is on bot side right now. I've got kind of Ezreal hovering around the Raptors, Yone somewhere in the river right now, and Dragon's about to come up. I TP in like an absolute idiot. I pencil myself, get myself stuck in a really shitty situation. Jarvan EQ flashes, I basically die for free. I basically get one shot, so in terms of speed of my death, very, very quick. I wasn't able to pump out any damage before I died. My team isn't in position to actually follow up on my death or capitalize on them using any cooldowns onto me. My Hecarim's not even anywhere near me, so he can't do jack shit. And now we lose complete control of the objective. We have to probably give the dragon. They might even be able to Baron because our jungle's on bot side and I died. I don't have TP. That is just the worst death. That is like an absolute just kick in the nuts, right? We lose so much for that. That's... That basically, if we go through every variable in terms of like time, we don't buy any time. My team can't get jack shit off of it. We lose a neutral objective. I'm worth a decent amount because at that time I think I was two and three. So it's not like I was, you know, inting at that stage. So yeah, absolute disaster. This one here is Nemesis playing Nico into Syndra. So in this situation, we're both low. It looks like our bard support is coming up to Rome and go for the go for the gank, but we end up getting clipped by the QE before that, and we end up dying. This is really a big disaster because number one, we, we wasted Bard's time. We actually wasted Bard's exhaust. We end up losing all of this farm mid because we don't have TP after this. This is an absolute disaster. And on top of that, it's not like our jungle is in a position to capitalize on the enemy jungle showing mid here. So this is basically as bad as it gets. Um, this is another one. So Nemesis again. Playing oh, Silas, heavy trading here. Now, something to make clear, he's heavy trading when his jungler is in base and he doesn't have TP. So if he gets really low here, he has no way to get bailed out. So he heavy trades when he shouldn't be heavy trading. Ends up taking a really bad trade. Graves on through, boom, quick kill, in out. Now notice, guys, why this is so low value. He doesn't have a TP, so he's going to lose the wave like last time. His jungler isn't in a position to actually capitalize on Graves showing on the map. He was really, really easy to kill for Graves and really efficient for Graves to kill. Graves just went around the corner, ordered him like, I think once, a W1 auto killed, such that Graves could just go in, out, boom, straight back to camps or even respond to whatever Viego does. So this is, again, an extremely low value death. Um, it's something you want to avoid at all costs. So moving on. Um, okay, so this one is me actually. So I actually am doing a pretty good job as an Ari, but I think I made a play before my recall, so I don't have my flash or I don't have my ultimate. So here, what ends up happening, and my jungle is, I think, recalling on bot side. So here, the Evelyn does a really good play, knows I don't have R or anything. So he just she just basically ganks me upon me, arriving back to lane. Now, if we freeze frame right now, I, I'm going to lose this farm because I'm dead for 30 seconds. My jungler's in base, so he can't do jack shit about Evelyn showing on the map. Um, you know, I'm worth a decent amount of gold right now. This is also a pretty, pretty goddamn low value death here. So this is another Oriana one. I don't know who this is. It could be me. I'm unsure though. Let's take a look. So we go for some heavy trades right now. No, this is actually, no, this is not me. This is another MLA client. So he's heavy trading with the Akali. Goes in. Uh, looks like our Vi is actually on the dragon. We heavy trade. Udia comes by. We just get whipped. And then we burn flash and die. Now, this is extremely low value for a multitude of reasons. Number one, we're worth a lot of gold because we're 3-0. and oh. Number two, our jungler's not in position to capitalize on this death. Really. Number number three, we were really easy to kill. Udi can just come in quickly, you know, pop goes, insta kill, don't have to chase a, a, across the map or anything. And number four, we end up burning flash as well. So very, very low value death. So here we go for, this is me, I think going for a heavy trade onto the Azir. I know my, my Graves is invading, so I shouldn't really be looking for a play. I should be playing qu quite safe. But then they chain CC me beautifully there. I greed my flash, so Azir goes to the WEQ. 
asks me into the Talia E, so I instantly get stunned, and then I die. Now, this actually is really bad because my jungle is invading. Now, he has to cancel his invade because they're going to collapse onto him. And actually, after this, Graves gets collapsed on by the Azir and the Italia and ends up dying. So, I'm making my jungle's life a hell of a lot harder. I was I was zero one at the time, so, you know, I'm worth an okay amount of gold. Um, and my bot lane, again, wasn't in position to capitalize on the fact that the enemy uh, jungle was showing mid as well. So, uh, an extra little variable there to consider. Here, this is a Talon uh, client that I have in the MLA. So if we freeze frame right now, look at his teammate's location. They're kind of hovering on the back end, back side of this rift. And Warwick was even starting a recall for some reason. So they're on the other side of the map. Allow we shoving out top side. The only person showing on the map right now is actually that Ezreal who's on who's on top side. No one's showing mid. So what, what ends up happening here is that we try to go for a play here on the Katarina. We burn our ultimate. We die. And if we freeze frame right now, what can our team get from this death? Nothing. The top tier two is already dead. Our Warwick's in base. There's no mid tower to get. So even if we get a little bit of prior mid, it means absolutely nothing. Our team's not in position to actually do the rift. This makes absolutely no sense. This is an extremely low value death here, guys. Now it'd be very different if our team was on the neutral objective right now. Or maybe they had already shoved on uh, Midwave and were, were sieging tier two. That would be very different because if they all went bot and burned all these cooldowns, then my team could maybe get mid tier two or something. Right, it wouldn't be too bad. So this is a this is actually what you see a lot in in Emerald and Platinum specifically. These really really low value deaths where they they're thinking about oh there's a kill I'm gonna go for a kill oh I can kill but they're not thinking big picture okay if this if I go for this kill and and they come here and you know I and I um and I die you know is my team able to do anything and often time oftentimes they're not even contemplating that they're not even aware of their teammates location in, in the remotest in, in any way shape or form so um. Let's move into the summaries, guys. So hopefully you've taken something away from this video. You know, a few messages that I really wanted to get across with, it, with this one is, you know, League is not a simple black and white game. Everything lives in the gray area, whether it's the, you know, the amount of value you're getting from priority, whether it's the amount of value you're getting from a kill or a death, whether it's the amount of value you're getting from a given objective. Everything is specific to that game, specific to that moment, relative to where everyone is on the map, what the win condition is, the game state, everything, all right? And we need to learn to view League through this nuanced gray area lens. You know, and if you could take one thing away from this video, please make it such that you want the enemy to sweat for kills. You want to make them earn their kills. There's a very big difference between, you know, dying via jungle just coming in, quickly swooping in, hitting you once and dying, versus them having to burn flash, burn ultimate, and take 10 seconds to kill you. It's a very, very, very big difference. And if you ever only play super defensive, Right? And you never even put yourself in these situations, guys. You're never going to learn to walk the tightrope of maximizing pressure or value. And you'll never actually develop the underlying sophisticated threat assessment required to be, quote unquote, annoying to kill. So this is a skill in itself. Being annoying to kill is a skill that you guys are going to have to develop. So whenever you're reviewing your deaths and you're going into your games, right? Into, sorry, in the post game, ask yourself two questions. How could I have played this mechanically better from a micro kind of perspective, right? How could I have played it mechanically better, whether it's my positioning, my, my ability usage, you know, all that good stuff. But then ask yourself big picture from a macro perspective. How valuable was this kill? Or sorry, how valuable was this death? Did I buy a lot of time for my team? Was I even aware of my teammate's location? Should I even be in here? Should I even be going for this play in the first place? You know, if I'm 3-0 and with Zindra, should I be flashing aggressively like this and trading one for one? You know, these are the sorts of questions that I want you guys to be asking. I want you to be thinking, getting into the details, details zooming in, but then zooming out and thinking big picture. So, hope you enjoyed this one. Hopefully it plants a seed in your brain for you guys to uh, look at the game through a different lens. Otherwise, um, good luck with this all of you guys. Cheers, and I'll see you for another video soon.